Welcome to the CPHAGES Lysate Archiving Protocol brought to you by the University of Pittsburgh. The purpose of this video is to communicate the new procedure for sending phage lysates to the University of Pittsburgh to be archived. A comprehensive archive of lysates for phages found through the CPHAGES program and entered into phagesdb.org is a valuable asset to the CPHAGES community as well as the larger mycobacteriophage research community. The University of Pittsburgh has agreed to house this archive and distribute samples when necessary. Please follow the following steps to ensure that your samples are received in a timely manner and properly placed into the archive. Before we begin, I would like to highlight two major changes from previous years. Firstly, you will need to complete a new material transfer agreement between your school and the University of Pittsburgh. Secondly, we will be using DMSO as a preservative in lysates and not glycerol as previous. This video is an overview of a protocol found on phagesdb.org under the Protocols tab. There are three sections to this video and protocol. The first covering documentation, the second sample preparation, and the third shipping instructions. There are two major forms of documentation in this process. The first, the material transfer agreement must be completed before any transfer of materials or reagents can happen between your university and the University of Pittsburgh. The second documentation form, the packing slip or phage list printout, is a pre-populated document that is generated based on data you entered into PhagesDB. If there are any blank columns, you will need to fill them in and include this slip with your return package. Before we talk about the sample preparation process, I would like to mention each of the materials included in your archiving box that you will be using to make sure your samples are properly archived. The first, and perhaps most important part of the materials you receive from us for archiving purposes, are your screw-capped, barcoded microcentrifuge tubes. Each tube has a unique barcode identifier that will allow us to differentiate the tubes and keep track of them in our inventory. Your package will also contain glass beads, which will need to be sterilized, DMSO for use in archiving, a return box for sending us your samples, and finally, you will need to provide a high titer lysate of your phages to be archived. Now that you are familiar with all of the materials needed to archive your sample, we will show a short video that will walk you through the process of archiving your C phages samples. We begin the process by first labeling each of the tubes that you will use to archive your samples. In this case, two tubes will be used to archive one sample for redundancy in case of loss. Next, you will fill each tube, using a septic technique of course, with sterile beads to about one centimeter from the top of the tube. After filling your sample tubes with beads, you will begin to prepare your mixture of phage lysate and DMSO for archiving. A final concentration of 6% DMSO is desired. We recommend that you prepare at least 3 mils of this solution for archiving. As you can see here, our technician is using extremely sterile technique. It is very important that you do not mix lysates during this process. Once you have prepared the phage lysate mixture with the MSO, 
you may then proceed to fill up your archive tubes with sample. At this point, I would like to take a break to explain both proper and improper procedures for loading the beads. This diagram, included in your protocol, shows both proper and improper examples of tube filling. Example C is a good example of how to label your tubes. Example D shows you the proper amount of beads to add to the tube, with E and F denoting the proper amount of liquid added to each tube. Note the spacing. Example G and H denote improper amounts of beads to place in the tubes, with I and J showing you the improper way to fill them. It is important that the amount of liquid you add both cover the beads and not be too high in the tube. Returning to our video, we now see our technician filling the tubes with a proper amount of liquid for archiving. As you finish archiving your samples, it is important to both make sure that your tube lids are secure and that your tubes are properly labeled. You should also be keeping track of which phages you have archived on your phage packing sheet. As you finish preparing your samples, you should place them into the provided box and mail them back to the University of Pittsburgh using the provided labels. I would like to once again reiterate that all of the protocols shown in this video are available freely on phagesdb.org under the Resources tab. On behalf of the Hafa Lab Seed Phages Archiving Center and all of us involved in the program, we would just like to say a quick thank you for your participation and compliance with these measures.